Hi, everybody. We are here today with Professor uh, Luca Delamico and uh, his research group. Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, Hi. Luca Hi. is. Uh... Hi, guys. Luca is an ERC grantee working at the Department of Chemical Sciences at the University of Padua with his uh, ERC uh, research project. Uh, he studies how solar light, which is the most abundant uh, resource we have on Earth, uh, can trigger and promote uh, molecular chemical transformations. He has a, a five years project to work on various aspects of this process, which is called photocatalysis. And he has a vibrant group of young scholars. Three of them are here with us today, and they all got awarded uh, a Marie Curie Fellowship. So congratulations, guys. And uh, we're we're going to uh, uh, get to know you better in a minute. But first, uh, Luca, uh, you now are an ERC grantee with your Symphocat project. Uh, but before that, you've been supported by an MSCA fellowship yourself uh, back in Tarragona in Spain, if I uh, remember yeah. correctly. Uh, so two quick questions for you. Uh, what was the role of these European funding in your research career? And how and why you ended up spending your ERC starting grants at the University of Padua? Yeah, so actually the these two type of grants are very different. So when I was uh, writing and preparing the Marie Curie, I was a postdoc, so I was like a very young researcher. And there I learned how also to sell uh, the science that, that you are doing. So it's not just a matter to do something that is sustainable or clean and so on, but you have to be able to tell to the uh, audience, general audience, how important is your research. And in the Marie Curie Fellowship, this is really important. So the, the ERC is very different. Uh, I was a more, let's say, mature researcher, and there is only science. So there you can go deep in details because in the end, you will be evaluated also for details. So two very different type of grants, uh, but both very important for a young academic uh, career. Uh, the first one, of course, was important to spend these two years in Tarragona in ACAQ, which is one of the most important institutions for organic synthesis that we have in Europe. And also was a great, I had a great time there in the group and also uh, from the point of view of science, of course. But I have to say, at least in my, my opinion, so the ERC was really, uh, it changed my life. So it changed the balance in the, uh, also within the university for, uh, let's say, hiring people, buying new instrumentation, really to do the, the chemistry I wanted to do. So this was really for me... Uh, a really important grant, much more than the Marie Curie. But of course, I mean, this may be, this is my story. And how we end up in Padova. So actually, when I finished the Marie Curie in, in Tarragona, uh, I was contacted by my supervisor at that time that was there, was actually an Italian professor. Now, actually, he's back in Bologna. And he told me, look, there are some open positions in, in Padova. I think you should apply because these are, let's say, was junior assistant professor professorship was now which we know a researcher a and i say okay so i was actually not looking to go back to my home country at the time but say okay let, let's see and uh, let's see how it, I, how it goes and so on so i i came here for the first time i visited padova it was a very nice town the department was very active the science that people were doing were interesting and then so, okay, I will apply, then I, I got the position, then I move, uh, and so on. And then, yeah, and then after five years, I applied to the RC, and, and it was success, successful in my case. So, Yeah, and a life changer, as you as you mentioned before. And uh, yes, the, the nice thing that uh, uh, you have in common uh, with your collaborators uh, is, uh, of course, uh, having uh, having won uh, a Marie Curie Fellowship uh, yourself, and uh, each one of them, uh, along with their expertise, are also bringing to the group uh, their personal funding to work on their on their own uh, research project. 
So uh, you definitely have something in common there. And also, I think you have something more in common with some one of them, at least. So Vasco Corti, for example. Hi, Vasco. Uh, yeah. I, I know you spent your postdoc in Arus in Denmark, and uh, you worked with the same professor that uh, supervised Luca a few years before, uh, while he was spending his uh, PhD uh, visiting period there. Uh, so, did you already know Luca when when you were in uh, in Arus? How the two of you met, and uh, also how how you got your your uh, MSCA fellowship, and why you chose Luca as your supervisor for the project? Yeah, exactly. Let's say Luca and I uh, shared um, a common experience in our uh, science life, but it was a uh, two different periods, two different times. So it was there. Uh, way before uh, than me. Uh, but uh, yes, so basically after my PhD, I decided to move abroad to Aarhus, um, uh, city in, in Denmark for a postdoc. Uh, I spent there more than roughly more than two years. And then uh, it was a very nice experience for, for me as, from a scientific point of view, but also person. Uh, I think it really shaped my, uh, let's say, sci uh, like, like, my uh, way of being a, sci uh, a scientist. And then I came back to, to Italy after that experience with a, a very uh, interesting idea in mind. Uh, and then I decided, uh, after spending another year of postdoc in Trieste, uh, I decided I really want to develop this, uh, this idea. And I started wondering, um, uh, where, uh, what is the, the best group for, for me to develop this idea? And uh, looking around in Italy, I, I, I wanted to, to try and develop this, uh, develop this idea in Italy. Uh, I kind of already knew Luca, and I knew that his uh, background in light-driven uh, methodologies uh, could be very helpful to uh, successfully develop this, uh, this idea. So, uh, I decided to to reach out to Luca, uh, and as I mentioned, we kind of uh, knew each other before, so it was really easy to get in touch with him. And, and he seemed uh, uh, very enthusiastic about this idea. He, when I mentioned that I could uh, also try to uh, write a um, Marie Curie proposal, he was uh, uh, very. Um, enthusiastic as well. I mean, he uh, obviously encouraged me to to try and apply for this kind of grant. And then talking um, with him uh, was um, somewhat uh, reassuring because I knew he he was uh, somewhat uh, an emerging scientist in this uh, in this field. He, I think, he had just won the the ERC uh, grant, so I knew that his group is was going to. Uh, to grow, and uh, he's a. Um, I knew he was a, a young researcher, so he would probably uh, be very present in the lab uh, still, and therefore that to me it meant uh, a good uh, project supervision, good mentoring, and uh, I knew he, I was sure he he was gonna let's say build a dynamic uh, working environment with a lot of uh, international people and. I mean, uh, we decided to apply together with the for the Marie Curie Fellowship. I thought we were uh, hopefully, let's say, a strong uh, strong candidate for with the proposal, and uh, we've been lucky. And uh, I was awarded the the Marie Curie, and I'm now in part of our yes working on that project. Yeah, congratulations on on the award. And uh, what about you, Jose? Jose, Jose Javier Garrido Gonzalez. Hi, Jose. Yeah, hi. Um, definitely, as Vasco said, having a young researcher which is present in the lab uh, supervising your project is definitely something very useful. But how yeah, about uh, yeah? How, how about you? How do you how you met uh, uh, Luca and uh, tell us something? Uh, where do you come from, academically speaking, and uh, what kind of opportunity this research period in Padua represents for you? Uh, yeah, well, I finished my PhD and I had the opportunity to apply for a 
Spanish fellowship to, to go one year abroad. So at that time, uh, one of my supervisors, uh, he did also in the board of some photochemistry, and he wanted to, to do some research uh, in Salamanca. So I think it was a good idea to, to do a post of in photocatalysis uh, and photochemistry. So I was looking for different groups. Um, yeah, I, I saw the, the web page, which I think is very important in the research group to have an updated web page. And the web page of Luca was amazing. Uh, yeah, so I contacted him. And we had a Zoom call to, to meet each other. Uh, yeah, and to ask him if uh, uh, he could uh, support my my application to this Spanish fellowship, and um, yeah, uh, hopefully I I got it. So I start here in in Padua in November. Um, yeah, I, uh, so that uh, that was the story. So in this uh, Zoom call, he also encouraged me to, to apply for the Marie Curie. I was also thinking about it. And yeah, I started to, to prepare the application. And uh, uh, it was uh, awarded in February. How, how did you react when uh, you got the, uh, the news of the, of the fellowship? Well, I, I, was, uh, I was in bed, actually, because I think it was around 6 in the morning. And I received an email. Uh, at that time, I was changing my uh, apartment, so I I thought, well, this is the email I receive every morning to to with the new apartment, free apartments, and yeah, I waited five minutes and then I checked the mobile phone and I received the, the email from the European Commission, and it was <laughs> very stressful because uh, you needed to to put the your uh, password and I didn't, I barely remember the, the password I, I, I put. And then yeah, I, I, I could log in and I see the, the, the result. Uh, I called my wife and then I received the, the WhatsApp from Luca. So this was uh, amazing. Yeah, definitely, definitely something that deserves to be told to your wife. Yes. And yeah. uh... Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez Perez, the uh, hi Ricardo. Uh, hi everybody. Uh, mm, I know also you you had uh, an uh, interesting reaction when you were uh, notified by the uh, the award, but I think that things didn't went uh, as expected uh, uh, since the beginning, right? Yeah, in my case, it was way different to the previous two, or the like previous three, because of course, when uh, I applied uh, to the Marie Curie, of course, and the announcement of the outcome, the results was supposed to occur, I remember, on February the 14th, St. Valentine's Day. So I was expecting to have a very romantic and nice day. So as uh, Jose was telling, uh, uh, very early in the morning, I woke up, I checked the results. Uh, it's very straightforward that you didn't get it because it was like, okay, congrats, you're in the reserve list. You have your score and the evaluation report that indeed it was overall very good. Uh, it was a very nice score actually. And I was in the reserve list. Uh, then I was uh, talking with everybody like, okay, you should not come down every day. You should continue, keep up. Next year will be the best one. So, of course, in that moment, I was hired. I was working at Professor Del Amico's research group, but hired by the ERC uh, funding and money and one of these contracts. Uh, well, this happened on, the fe on February the 14th, but something around like... One, one month ago, I was working here at the lab. I was separating in the biotech some diastereoisomers that I was very focused on this. Then uh, I, I usually don't have my mobile with me uh, during labor hours. So uh, at the end, I, I received this notification like, Luca is calling you, okay? So uh, what's happening, okay? 
And Luca, the, the first uh, words of Luca were like, are you stand up or are you sitting? Like, no, I'm standing up because I'm working. Okay, better you, sh you sit down. Like, you got the Marie Curie. Like, what? No, nah, it's impossible. Because I wasn't expecting, of course, that like, it was a normal day. Everything went smooth. Actually, Luca was not here. He was in a Congress, I think. He was in Switzerland, I think, I remember. And it, it was a normal day. And I wasn't expecting at all. It was not just as the, uh, the, the day for Vasco or Jose. It was a way different day. So it took me like... I don't know, like three hours to realize and believe that it was happening. Actually, I went to Vasco and like, hey, can you explain me if indeed these emails uh, mean that I got it? And he told me like, yeah, 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 you got it, man. Uh, yeah, it was it. And it was, it was a very nice surprise. And after that, here at Padova, uh, spritz is a must too to <laughs> celebrate. So I offered a round of spritz to everyone that was working here at the lab because everyone was in the Congress. So yeah, it was a very nice, a very nice day that I will not forget. And apart for uh, from the spritz that you offer to your colleagues, how do you expect to spend? Uh, the the funds you you get and how do you expect in general what do you expect from this Marie Curie in uh, in Padova? Well, to, uh, of course, the this fellowship is like crazy amount of money in terms of salary, but it's also interesting the fact that you give and, and is the first approach to somehow something related to what Professor Luca and Jose have been explaining about how to manage resources, infrastructure and money, because you have like this amount of budget that it will be destined for your research. So uh, I think this is, uh, this is the first step like to reality, uh, like the first encounter with the life and scientific life of how to manage money, how to manage time. For example, in the Marie Curie, this like the Gantt table in order to schedule, tentatively schedule what you're going to execute. This is the first approach that you have to this type of managing, the manage, management of the time. Also in the ERC, you should uh, include this as well. But for me, it was the first time that I could encounter with this. So I am expecting to learn from Luca and from the other colleagues, the other fellows, how to manage both time and money in terms of, uh, and make this a fruitful experience, not only for me, but in terms of results, uh, scientific publications, uh, dissemination of the results, because this is important. And this is very linked to what Luca was saying, like how to communicate your science and tell the non-experts that your science is important. I think that's the, main goal of the European Commission in order to have these fellows. Yes, and definitely having other uh, fellows uh, next to you who are doing the same thing is definitely really helpful. But Luca, given that you already uh, passed through this, uh, what kind of advice you feel you can give to your uh, collaborators here? Well, I would say for sure to enjoy day by day the life in the lab so what they what they like to do so work in a free and helpful environment this is key and actually i i can also recall the experience in denmark when i was in the same group that vasco was way after me but yeah, I have to say that there I learned how to live the lab, lab laboratory life in a free, relaxing environment. That this does not mean that we were working a lot. We were working a lot of hours per day, even the weekend. But it was so, I don't know, so nice to stay there with colleagues and friends. And, you know, time was passing so easily. And and yeah, this is what I can wish to, to do to work uh, happy and freely and, and enjoy the chemistry. Then the results will come naturally. So we don't have to be worried about objectives and so on. If if you work in this way, I think then the project will be successful. I mean, this at least is my experience in this case. So 
enjoy your job uh, guys and uh, uh, as luca said and uh, thank you very much for this uh, very pleasant conversation and uh, good luck with everything thank you thank, thank you. you thank you thanks for the time